Welcome everyone to this section of the course on the Code Interpreter. We already know that ChatGPT can produce useful code that we ourselves can run if we know how to run the code. But what if you don't know how to run a piece of Python code or Java code? Well, the ChatGPT Code Interpreter expands on this concept by actually connecting the model to a sandbox environment that will run the code it generates. The Code Interpreter provides a very powerful tool that you can essentially treat as an automated assistant that can accept files and write and run code for us. But how does this actually work in practice? Behind the scenes, the Code Interpreter is doing a couple of steps. First, you upload a file and ask it a question, and then it's gonna generate Python code that it thinks is gonna be able to answer the question for your actual file. Then it's gonna run that Python code in a sandbox environment. Then it's gonna make another large language model call to itself to see if the answer it was able to come up with from the result of the code actually answers your question. If it feels like there's a disconnect there or it wasn't able to answer your question, it's gonna to try to repeat with another block of code and fix its previous answer. It will try to repeat that until it's decided that either the question has been answered or more information is needed and it can't just answer your question at this time. Keep in mind that if there is no plugin for what you're trying to accomplish, you may wanna consider using the code interpreter as a powerful alternative. Also keep in mind, there really is no guarantee that the code interpreter is always gonna be able to actually answer your question. You may see it fail quite often, depending on your particular data set or file that you're passing in. Okay, let's take a quick look at the interface before we begin exploring specific examples of the code interpreter. Okay, so here I am at ChatGPT. Before we begin, make sure that you've selected the code interpreter as an option by going to settings, and then currently it's on beta features, and then select code interpreter as selected. So that's on, which means when I go to GPT-4, I should be able to choose code interpreter, and then you'll see this little plus button show up that allows you to upload files. Perfect. So what's the next steps that we can do here? Let's imagine I'm searching Wikipedia and I see a list of national parks of the United States. And as I'm scrolling down, I notice this table and I also notice that I can actually download all these coordinates. And I can also map all the coordinates using OpenStreetMap. So you can see that this has name, image, location, coordinate information, latitude and longitude, etc. And let's imagine I actually want to pinpoint these locations on a map. Now, I may not know how to actually do that via code, but Code Interpreter can give it its best shot. So I click on show links here, and I'm gonna click on this to download the KML file. I don't even really need to know what a KML file is. I can also try experimenting this with GPX. I also don't know that file extension type. It looks like it's a geo export, but we'll imagine I'm not really sure what a KML file is, but I don't myself need to know. I just need to pass it into the Code Interpreter. So click on this to download, and then we're gonna upload that file to GPT-4 Code Interpreter. So I'll click Upload File on that plus button, and I will upload that doc.kml file that I got from Wikipedia. And then what I'm going to do is just ask it to plot the coordinates on a map. And then we'll see what the code interpreter is able to do. Keep in mind, you can also upload the file first and then ask questions about it later. So you can have multiple questions about the file. And what the code interpreter is gonna start doing is it's gonna to try to explain the file that you uploaded as well as start step-by-step -step figuring out how can I actually accomplish a task or answer the question you gave me. It will start working and you can actually expand on this to show the work. And what it means by work is basically generating the Python code that it's going to run in a little sandbox environment along with your file. So we can see there's some Python code here and we can eventually see that it tried to do some sort of map here, but uh, I don't really see the coordinates here. So I'm gonna tell it that I can't see the coordinates. So I can't see the coordinates, question mark. So again, code interpreter is not always gonna get it right, but hopefully with a little bit of prompt engineering, we can kind of coax it for us to see the results. So I can't see the coordinates on the map, question mark. And let's see what it says. So, okay, it's gonna double check the extraction process. It's gonna try to work again, finished working. So it didn't, uh, wasn't able to grab those coordinates correctly the first time, so it's gonna try it again. It's gonna investigate the structure a little uh, more. We can, we can check the work too if we wanna uh, kind of pass this to our own developers to start experimenting with this. It figures out, okay, it looks like they're in this point tag. It's figuring out how to grab it from the point tag. And it's gonna try marking them down again. 
it figures out that it wasn't able to do what it wanted to do. And after a little while, it's actually able to kind of work through the process of plotting out these points on a map. But maybe this isn't interactive and I actually don't like this image. So what I can also do is say, uh, plot these coordinates on, in, on a map that is an HTML file that I can then open and interact with in a browser. That way I can actually uh, not just upload files, but I can also download them. So now it realizes, okay, I can use a different library to do this. So we'll let it work. And you can always come back here and explore the different works. But the main idea is it's kind of doing this repeat process to fix errors that it noticed. So this is technically successful, but it's not a very nice looking map. So let's see if it can use a little bit of HTML. And it says, okay, you can download open the HTML font in a web browser. So I'll click on this to download the file. It's going to start the download. And now let's open up that interactive map.html file. And there it is. So you can see that it was able to now plot it on an interactive map. Now that did require me to have a little bit of understanding that HTML files can be open in a browser, but you can see that this can really leverage even just small understandings of things like a little bit of Python code or what you can do with Python code, but I don't need to be the one actually generating the Python code. So that's why it's important to understand the capabilities of programming, but now with ChatGPT Code Interpreter, I don't really need to be the one to develop the software itself. I can just have it come up with the code, give it the files, and then have it generate the maps here. And you can see they're pointing at uh, different national parks. Okay, very cool. Now let's continue this section by exploring other examples. Let's go through a quick example of how to analyze data with the code interpreter. All right, here I am at ChatGPT. Something I wanted to note before we continue is that there is this ability for code interpreter to essentially time out. It's not going to keep that file uploaded in that sandbox instance running, you know, for the rest of your life. So you may need to uh, essentially uh, reload the file and restart the process or just come up here and then rerun this kind of first one by clicking edit and then save and submit again. So just keep that in mind that it's not quite like a normal chat history because it didn't need to have a sandbox running and upload your file. You may need to re-upload it. You can always just come back to the first one, click here on edit and then just save and submit. You may need to again, click the plus button and re-upload that file. Let's start a new chat. I'm going to start a code interpreter again, and let me upload now a CSV file that I just downloaded. So under my downloads here, let's go to, I have a tips.csv file. It has just a bunch of information. It looks like this. It has information on the total bill, the tip, whether or not that person's a smoker, a really common data set that people work with data analysis just to kind of play around with. So let's upload that and see what we can do. Let's imagine I have a couple of questions that I want to answer about this tips.csv file. So what I can do here is just ask it, you know, what is the average tip amount? Question mark. It's going to upload that file. It's going to figure out, okay, what is this file structure? It's a CSV. It's going to take a look at the first few rows to understand that structure. And then it's going to realize that it's a CSV and it can start using probably something like pandas. Okay. So there you go. You can see it's using something like pandas. It read in the first couple of rows of the data frame or the data set, but that doesn't actually answer my question. So now it figures out, okay, to answer your question, I need to average this tip right here. So it's kind of feeding itself inputs to continue on. And you can see that it looks like the average tip result is $2.99, which can be rounded to $3. And now I can continue to have a conversation analyzing this data set. So you can imagine you could upload things like, uh, you know, company revenue data, whether, you know, it's in CSV file form or maybe stock data as well, and just ask it questions about this. So let me try one more question. So let me say, uh, what is the average tip based off or per day? So if I look at the original data, notice that it did have a day like Sunday, Monday, Saturday. Um, and so I believe it's just weekend data, Thursday through Sunday, and you can see it's calculating the average tip. And if you want to check the work to make sure it worked here, you can see, okay, it's grouping by day and then tip and then calculating the mean. And there you have it. Okay. So that's a simple way to just upload a data set and just continually ask questions. 
Let's move on to visualizing data. We are already explored how to analyze data, basically you just ask questions about the data set. Let's explore how we can visualize data. And we'll also show you some tricks to just create visualizations without a data set, but still using the code interpreter. All right, I'm back in the same chat that I was working with, but you can always you know, create a new chat and re-upload the file. And so I know I'm gonna ask it to maybe visualize, and that's the key word there. You wanna make sure you say visualize in your prompt. And we'll say visualize the distribution of let's say amounts. And here, a good idea for prompt engineering when you're uploading a data set is to make sure your prompts reflect the actual column names in your data sets. So it's always a good idea to scroll back and see, okay, was it actually referred to as amount or was it referred to something like total bill? So it's better for the code interpreter to figure out when I say amount that I'm referring to maybe total bill instead of just tip. So what I will say is, visualize distribution of total bill, and I'll actually say it as the column with an underscore there, so it really understands, and then we'll say per day. And notice that wasn't a question, it was actually a command. So we'll come back here, and so this sort of prompt engineering of taking into account the actual column names that are inside your data set is gonna really help code interpreter get the results you want. So let's see the work. We can see, okay, here's a distribution. It looks like it created a bunch of box plots and we can see the distributions per day. And if I wanna see this work, I can see it's essentially generating that code and then running it. Now I did also mention that we're not necessarily restricted to file types. Maybe I want to kind of make up a distribution. So I can ask it to do that as well. So I can say, you know, make up a visual distribution let's say, of customer heights. And so this doesn't have to do anything with the data. So note that it has the ability to just kind of make up a data set. And it's kind of logically thinking, okay, what's the average adult? I can then make a distribution off of that average with some sort of standard deviation. Notice this one's in centimeters. And so it's showing that work of it kind of just making up a distribution of data, but it's also using the large language models knowledge of kind of average human height. And so here you can see, now I have a distribution of customer heights that I can then work with. And what I can also say is now give me that height data as a CSV file. And so it's gonna, okay, think about it. It's gonna convert that to uh, a CSV and then I should be able to download this in just a second. So it saved it, a CSV file, you can download it here. I click on that and then it will download that file and I can see I have customerheights.csv. I can click on that and I can see the heights as a CSV file. Okay, perfect. So here we can see how we can visualize data. Basically the prompt engineering, two things to keep in mind there is the keyword visualize and also keep in mind the actual columns and names referring to your data set. The other thing to keep in mind is you can have it just make up data in case you need that for like a presentation slide or something similar to that. All right, let's go ahead and continue with other file types so you can work with code interpreter. Some other ideas we've learned about with PDFs with the code interpreter. We can directly upload PDFs, have the code interpreter extract text, and then ask questions about the document. Similar to plugins, but here we take a more manual approach. Let's check it out. All right, here I am at ChatGPT. Let's go ahead and quickly explore an example of PDFs. So if you're working in an office environment, you probably have a lot of people sending PDFs, things get saved as PDFs, and maybe you need to just figure out if something is mentioned in a PDF, or maybe you want a summary of something in a PDF. For example, maybe I'm working with a colleague and I like to do a little research of older GPT models, like GPT-2. So, you know, I Google the GPT-2 paper, um, I look around for it, I can see here it's actually the first link, and then you find a PDF. But maybe I don't have the time to read all of this, or I'm looking just for a specific question about this document. I will go ahead and then download this PDF. So I'm downloading that PDF, and then I'll come back to ChatGPT, and then let's upload it to ChatGPT. So its language models are unsupervised multitask learners. I will open that, let it upload, and then I can ask questions about it, or I can just send it, and then it'll figure out what it is. And for PDFs, it'll just ask you, how can I assist you with this document? So maybe I can ask, um, what is a summary of this paper? 
And so now it's using the large language model capabilities to figure out a summarization of the document. And I can also ask it questions about the document. Um, and let's think of once it's done generating this, we'll think of another question we can ask it. All right, so once that's done, what's really interesting is even back at the GP2-2 paper, it figures out that with enough data and computational power, it's possible to train a large language model that can generalize across a wide range of tasks. Um, quite fitting since I'm right now just talking with that very specific model. It also asks us, do we want a breakdown of any more specific section? Um, I can ask it questions like, does it discuss the risks of such models? Question mark. And so it does discuss risks and challenges. And so then it starts speaking about, you know, misuse concerns, generating misleading content, spam, etc. But you can imagine you can upload files like this. You can also extract information from the PDF files and just have a conversation about the PDF files, similar to what we saw in the plugin section. Okay, so this one's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, coming up next, we'll talk about images with ChatGPT Code Interpreter. We'll see you there. So hopefully you get the idea now that Code Interpreter can work with all different types of file types, whether it's a PDF or a CSV file or an Excel file or files that we don't truly understand like that coordinate file, we can still let Code Interpreter figure it out on its own and work with it. Finally, let's explore images of Code Interpreter because sometimes this is misunderstood as the language model dealing with the images when it's really the same idea of Python code to deal with the images and then we run the Python code. Let's check it out. All right, so here I am at ChatGPT. I've gone ahead and made sure I selected Code Interpreter, and let's see what we can and can't do with images. So I'm gonna come to unsplash.com and just search for images. So for example, let's imagine I want an image of a person. So I see a person here, these are free images, so let's select one of these, and I'm gonna download this. This is a free copyright free image, so we'll click on that, and then let's upload it to the Code Interpreter. So something that this model can't really do is I can't just ask it what's in this image. So I can't say like, what is this an image of? If I do that, it's gonna report back that it's not an image recognition model. So it can't actually view this image. Instead, this image is just like any other file that it can then run Python code against. So for example, I could ask it something like uh, draw a bounding box around the face in this image. And so that is something that can technically be accomplished with Python if you know enough about computer vision. And you can see that it's trying to figure out what actual Python code would I need to do to figure out where the face is in this image. And luckily for us, there is Python code that can do that. If you try this on other images, it may complain and may say, sorry, but I can't download a large enough model. So the better way to do this would be to use a really large neural network that detects you know, faces and images. But in this case, it you know, is doing it using something called cascade filters, which is actually something that can run in its little sandbox environment. And you can probably see here, it's drawn a bounding box, maybe a little faint on the screen, but there is a red bounding box around this image. And really you should be thinking about this image as a file that you can work with, not an image that the model can actually see. So that actually worked. I can also do things like convert this image to black and white, and it's gonna figure out what is the Python code that can do that. So as long as you can think in terms of, is there Python code that can probably accomplish this task or just general code that can accomplish that task? Would it be possible on this file type? Don't think of this as a model that can actually like see an image and understand it. So that's really a main point to get across when working with images. Keep in mind there are multimodal models. So BARD by Google actually is a multimodal model that you can upload images and just ask it, you know, what's in this image. And it's like a Google lens search in that case. But right now, at this moment in time, uh, GPT-4 Code Interpreter, that's not really what it's built for. But keep in mind, GPT-4 does mention multimodal inputs uh, coming at some point in the future. So maybe the base model will allow us to do that later on. Okay, that's it for images. Just be aware that is just like any other file, you're running Python code against it.